Welcome to our review on stretching springs. First thing we need to consider is how we can actually change the shape of an object. And the simple answer is that we're going to be applying forces, but we need two or more forces to actually carry out the compression, stretching or bending of an object. When we are actually changing the shape of an object, then the material the object is made from is important. If we have a plastic material and we've changed its shape, then when we remove the force, that material will not return to its original shape. So plastic materials will remain deformed even after the force is removed. Elastic objects, however, will return to their original shape once the force is removed. So a good example of a plastic material is plasticine because once you've molded it and taken your hands away, it doesn't then revert to the original ball it was in. It stays in whatever shape you molded it into. Whereas an elastic band or rubber band is a good example of an elastic material because once you stop stretching it, it returns to its original shape. If we consider what happens when we have a spring and we stretch it, then what we see is something known as Hooke's law. So if we plot a graph of our results, as I've done in the bottom left there, then when we have a graph of our force against extension, then we have a straight line that goes up to a certain point. Now, that point is called the limit of proportionality. So what we see is that initial part of the graph is a nice straight line. So that's a linear relationship. Beyond the limit of proportionality, though, it's no longer a linear relationship. And the reason for that is that our spring has an elastic limit. So once we go beyond the elastic limit, the spring is permanently deformed, which means that even after we remove the force, it won't go back to normal. Prior to the limit of proportionality, then what we will see is our spring will return to its original length when we remove the force. The last thing we need to be able to do is to actually carry out a calculation using something called the spring constant. So this is again a formula you're going to have to learn for the exam. It's not on the data sheet, so it's one to memorize. So the force exerted by a spring in newtons is the spring constant times the extension in meters. Now do go careful because where it's meters, they quite often give you the extension in centimeters. So remember to look at the units and convert where needed. If you need to work out the spring constant first of all from a graph, then it's just the gradient of the linear section. And the spring constant just tells us how stiff the spring actually is. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can explain how to stretch, bend or compress an object. You can describe the difference between elastic and plastic deformations. And you can describe the relationship between force and extension for a spring and recall the equation for calculating the spring constant and then also carry out calculations using it.